what's important when you want to do business in Germany, how to convince uh, German businesses to uh, get in touch with you, to uh, hire your services or your products. Um, I am on a panel with a lot of very interesting people today. Um, Bela Waldhauser to my left is uh, not only CEO of Tillerhaus, but also CEO of KDDI Germany. And Michael Frey uh, is CEO of Fact Encryption. Um, and he develops a very interesting algorithm for encrypting things. He told me just before this talk. <laughs> then Vincenz Wagner, I met him a lot of times already at Eco Activities. Um, he is uh, helping, he is market advisor for Enterprise Ireland and he helps business to start their business in Ireland, but also consults businesses who wants to do business in Germany, um, foreign companies. Then I'm joined also by Vincenz Wagner, uh, by, by, sorry, by Werner Paulus. Uh, he is uh, CEO of Wipacom. Um, Wipacom uh, consults uh, IT companies, but also other companies uh, doing business, businesses in foreign countries, either foreign countries in Germany or German, uh, German companies in foreign markets. Then I'm also joined by Stefan Ravemann of Ravemann Energy Academy. He is uh, the only non-German, I think, here, <laughs> who came to us uh, from Sweden a long time ago, and uh, he is um, uh, training people inside, his, uh, inside uh, companies how to do business uh, in Germany, and uh, I'm very happy to have him on the panel as well. And then, last but not least, we have Johannes Schäfer on the panel. He is uh, working for Frankfurt Econo Economic Development, um, GmbH, which is um, uh, Frankfurt Wirtschafts Wirtschaftsförderung Frankfurt, who help uh, companies to set up their companies in Frankfurt. And his uh, specialty is IT infrastructure. So uh, thank you all for being on the panel today. Um, I want to start with uh, some, um, you know, um, making fun of ourselves as Germans, uh, excluding Stefan, of course. Um, to use some self-deprecating humor and talk about the don'ts, what you should not do in Germany. So, any thoughts in the panel? Please grab the microphone. Well, somebody has to start, right? So, uh, I think um, one of the things that you shouldn't do as, as a foreigner coming to Germany, especially when you, when you deal with certain industries or with a certain level of people, is uh, calling people by their first name. Um, so uh, I think in the IT industry, it's, it's, it's quite common to do that. Um, but uh, in other industries, um, banking, etc., cetera, um, it's, uh, I would say, not appropriate to, to do that. Um, and then uh, since, we, since we have two, two doctors here, um, it's also very important in Germany to uh, call somebody doctor if he has a PhD degree, um, so uh, yeah, you're not just Rolf Klassen, you're Dr. Rolf Klassen, right? Well, I only can uh, agree with that. Um, I'm now, for the third year, I'm working in a 10,000 staff administration in Frankfurt. Um, originally, I worked in the IT industry, and I can only agree that you should be, in some areas, very formal. There are many processes in communications whenever somebody of you, I don't know whether you have to do with residence permit, working permits, with Zeitarbeitskräfte, um, Arbeitsüberlassungsgesetz, Vorschriftensregeln, you know, all those kind of things. Whenever you run, run into these things, uh, very often there are very complex admin processes in the background. And the, the guy in front of you that talks, the guy who talks to you, he is just part of a system. Sometimes he's not even in charge of the admin, ad admission or of the license or whatever itself, he is just asked by another part of the administration to consult them. So don't take things personal, be a little bit less uh, informal. And number two, now we are all just automatically shifting into English. Whenever somebody approaches the German administration part, the response, good morning, how can I help you, is no introduction to start talking the way you are used to. Because very often you find people in the administration who have to refer to school English, 
English learned at school, at high school, they can adjust to English. But their background is always either, either uh, British English or American English that they have learned from their teachers. 20 years ago, with a vocabulary dating back 20 years ago, if you approach these guys with some very quickly spoken Australian English, for example, <laughs> or if we have people from Asia, especially my community, people from India, talking very quickly then in response, the guy at the other side gets lost. This is not being impolite. This is just a difficulty. There is no way of understanding. Please leave the guys the time to make them understand what you're trying to say. So speak slowly, basically, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, we imitated that last night. I don't right. want to be impolite, but uh, there are some people coming into my office, and immediately I get an emergency call from the reception saying, like, please show up right now, because there's somebody we don't understand. I want to give Bela a chance to say something. Thank you very much. Um, I was, uh, I'm working now nearly four years for a Japanese company, and um, besides uh, the experience uh, doing business with a lot of different European countries, uh, working with Japanese people is really, really different, and we have had some intercultural uh, sessions already in the company. And um, I just received, um, ten days ago, uh, five simple tips to make a great impression on local colleagues for Japanese expats. And I went through that just before our session here. Pay attention to not dragging your feet when walking. And I can tell you that's what I see when I'm in Tokyo. The people um, don't lift their feet. It's normal. Here in Germany, if you have kids, you tell them, lift your feet. So, in our country, this can be seen as lazy. Or avoid sniffling in the office when you have a cold. As this is considering a lack of good manners. In Europe, in Germany, we are using our uh, tempo. Yeah? That's not normal in Japan. I've heard that many times. Again, I try to teach my children. <laughs> But uh, in, in Japan, that's normal. But uh, I, I don't want to read all the five topics. But... These are simple differences which are very normal in Japan and can be seen completely different here in Germany. So, Stefan, you wanted to say something. Yes. Um, we don't have an ISO standard for basic behavior. That is uh, the problem. But um, I would say for Germany, don't come to Germany if you are not, if you are not have collected all needed or most of the needed information. Don't come if you are not prepared. Don't come if you are in a hurry. Be prepared that it takes time. Right. So, uh, Michael, do you want to say something? Yep. <coughs> so, um, I just want to add to, to Stefan. I fully agree to that. Um, you need to be very clear what your uh, intention is to come to Germany, what products or solutions you want to offer in which markets you want to go after. And therefore, you need to prepare uh, yourself uh, in, in, a, in a very professional way. Um, and I can only give you some recommendation. Talk to somebody who is locally before you enter the market uh, and use people who have uh, a lot of experience in this, in this traditional German behavior in how to do business. A Dutch scientist... <coughs> called Gerd Hofstede, uh, once identified um, a principle, a cultural element of the German people to be uncertainty avoidance. And that encapsulates really everything. If you manage to get a meeting with a German potential buyer, you must be prepared. You cannot bullshit him because you will be challenged immediately, right? If, if it's facts, if your product is really unique, great. Um, they will work off piously the agenda and will not make small talk uh, or want, you know, they're not relationship-based, they're, they're mm, task-oriented, and, uh, and they have fears, right? The famous German angst. So they're afraid that legacy compliance is not there or future-forward compliance is not there. They're afraid that their peers will question their procurement decision. Um, they're afraid that you're not there in five years' time anymore or that you're not uh, 
strong enough financially that you don't have a German speaking after sales service that can explain everything in the meeting that they didn't dare admit they didn't understand. And um, when all that um, has been said and done, the German buyer will relax somewhat. And then there's maybe time for small talk or, you know, they're perfectly normal like other Europeans. But they, um, um, I think they attempt at making rational decisions and they, um, they're obviously worried uh, what that responsibility entails. They are formal. Um, they dislike dragging feet or not saying hello in a formal way or using the title. And they're irked by that. Maybe it's insecurity, maybe it's the rule-based thing saying, I expect exactly that, right? If, if you come into a public sector bus and you don't have exactly the change and know where you're going, people will um, maybe uh, reprimand you. If you ever go on a subway, you will notice that it's silent. You know, maybe it's a degree of Japanese embarrassment there, I don't know, and it's changing. Generations are changing their behavior and they're exposed to digital media and so on and so forth. But Germans are somewhat... Um, difficult to break into initially, right? They, they may seem confrontational even, right? Uh, it's no, there, there are no uh, explorative or exploratory meetings. If they meet with you, they're really interested. I uh, help Irish companies. Um, I'm actually not helping many uh, invest in Ireland. I'm more helping Irish companies get into the um, German-speaking markets. And uh, I tell them, you know, don't, don't be late and deliver the, um, the agreed-upon uh, follow-up piously on the date agreed. Um, and don't think that you can just walk in and wing it. That Germans really dislike that because they feel this responsibility of making the best decision. And they, um, uh, they say segregate their private life from their professional life to a degree. They are um, sort of fun and games afterwards. Let, let me add something to, to Stefan. Before there will be an ISO norm, there will be a dean, norm, uh, a dean standard for, uh, uh, for, for behavior. <laughs> Um, one thing to add to this, um, it's also about politeness and precision. Uh, sometimes politeness is the source of misunderstanding. Uh, if you show up in an office and you are asked for a certain fact, information or quantity, uh, just, just an example, I have a coffee, Judith wants me to, uh, do you like milk or sugar? Then I'd say, yeah, it would be nice if you would be kind enough to go and stop it. You're in a German office, somebody asks you, you want milk or coffee? The answer, if it's only milk, whatever, you say yes, period. Not yes, I would like to, but, but no, yes is the answer. If you have a choice with two alternatives, you take the two alternatives and you say milk, yes, sugar, no, that's it. It's not impolite. It's not rude to answer that way. It's just you were asked for a piece of information, you deliver that piece of information. There's nobody insulted by doing so. There is a wonderful piece with John Cleese sitting at Letterman show explaining how British excuse themselves for their excuses and for the excuses they have not uh, delivered so far. That is a wonderful piece. Germans start crying when they see that. You know, it's just a different way. It's not rude and impolite. Understand the way that people react. Because in the end, it's about the responsibility. You fulfill your function and you then hand on things. You hand it over to somebody else. Lead times are considerably longer than other markets, I'd say 18 to 24 months in, on average. But once you're in, you also have a very stable uh, supplier-buyer relationship. Uh, so Germans try to be very mm, focused. And uh, if, you, uh, if you sort of qualify, then they will try to stick with you. Right? Uh, maybe something I should add as well. Uh, in According to you, uh, you should be in, Derm in Germany, you should be accurate. Uh, you should be specific and you should also demonstrate you are a trusted person they can work with. And this is something which takes time and I agree, um, a, um, a positive and a uh, forward-looking uh, relationship takes at least about 18 to 24 months. Um, just one comment about um private and business life. So in a lot of countries it's absolutely mandatory that you invite your potential client for lunch, for dinner, for whatever. Uh, in Germany people have their own private life. Sometimes they accept. Mostly they, are, they cannot accept because of compliance reasons for example. 
So it's a, it's a completely different way of doing business compared to some other countries, not all of them, but some other countries where the out of business relationship is much, much more important than in Germany. In Germany, and, and that was mentioned already, it's about the facts, it's about the reliability, the trust, and the confidence in you, in the company, not in lunch, dinner, whatever. Yeah, I want to add to that um, a little bit more specifically. Um, in many cultures, like in Japan, it's very common to have very expensive gifts. It's not possible in Germany. It's not common to give gifts. Uh, even if you give gifts more than five euros, some people are not allowed to accept them for policy uh, for for uh, reasons, compliance reasons. So no gifts in Germany. Um, any more things to add for the don'ts? It's just a detail, but you know, like the, this trusting that you're reliable, that you're precise, right? That you don't waffle when you're being asked whether you want milk or sugar. Um, a limp handshake and no eye contact is, is the first mistake you, come, uh, you can make when coming in, right? Because think of it as an old spinster, say, right? I'm full of fears. I want to see that this is a reliable potential future partner for me, right? Mm -hmm. So a limp handshake and looking away, and I not have experience like this. Wrong, wrong approach. <laughs> and it all goes sort of relates to that. So if uh, any of you had one, f one thing to say that would be the very most important thing to think about when doing ger business in Germany to be successful, what would that be, each of you? Be formal. Competent. Uh, let the people at the German side take their time. Don't be too fast. Be in time at your meeting, deliver in time. Be absolutely prepared. Be concrete and uh, prepared in terms of the culture. So um, now we wrapped up basically the, the don'ts and we already heard about a lot of do's during the don'ts uh, <laughs> time. And we heard the very most important things to do in Germany when you want to start your business. Um, what do you want in what in your opinion how long does it take to really have success in germany is it is a quick thing or is it slowly how can you accelerate your success in germany how to um, are there any bottlenecks that you have to overcome maybe i can ask johannes first if there are any bottlenecks where you can uh, make things faster well when we are talking about it business here um, IT business is not taking that much time because processes in general are much quicker than in other industries. If you deliver, if you are into retail and whatever, it really takes, as it was mentioned, a year to two years to really get established. People know you, they send you the tenth invoice, they know you are paying, whatever, that takes uh, quite a while. In IT industry, it gets, uh, it, things are much quicker. So um, uh, that is what I would build up first to have this reputation. Um, other than, it's, it's branch related. The question, the answer is, uh, it's branch related to the amount of time. You have to um, spend a lot of time before you meet the first customer. Because you have to collect information. Then you have to collect information. Then you have to analyze the information. Then you have to think. And then you have to plan. And then you can meet customers. <laughs> Welcome to Germany, Stefan. <laughs> Um, yeah, I I, uh, um, I agree with uh, uh, with Johannes uh, that uh, um, um, I don't really know what I wanted to say anymore. Um, it's over to you and come back. Buyers will, will check whether you know your competition, and they may have spoken to competition. If you waffle them regarding the strengths and weaknesses of your competition, you're out as well. So I'd stick with the pre pre preparation, and it's actually trivial. If you un understand your, your client, you will understand that you probably shouldn't come with a non-disclosure uh, agreement or with a contract that will uh, take their German legal department three months' time to digest it. Right? Because you break the dynamics of the whole sales process. So, you know, like understand where they're coming from, what their needs are. If they talk to you, they usually have identified you as a, 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 a solution to their problem. So you're onto something and you can ruin it if you don't understand how they operate, what their needs are. You know, so preparation 
should uh, should uh, work work that. I recall again what I wanted to say. <laughs> So uh, yes, in general, um, things go a little bit quicker in IT industry, but uh, not if you're a startup. Uh, if you're a startup, then the German company wants to see a proof that you will still be there in two, three, four, five years. And the only proof you can have is be there in two, three years and talk to people again. Uh, and, and, and also during that time, you know, keep talking to the people. It will take time. Um, if, you're, if you're an IBM or HP, you can go there and say, we have a new product, it's great, just buy it, and they will, uh, they will, they will issue a purchase order to, to buy that, not if you're a startup. That has been a great session. Thank you very much for, uh, for the panel, to, for your uh, participating in the panel, and thank you very much for listening to this uh, panel. I think we are all now prepared to do successful business in Germany. And now I hand over to Judith. Thank you very much.